When I started to think about ending the show, believe it or not, I, I thought, well, if we end it now, it would be nine seasons. And then I started counting up all these other nines, and I said, well, there seems to be a nine thing. I have nine stars that were on my shoes. And uh, I had something about that ninth season to the nine stars on the shoes. And then I looked it up, and it turns out nine is the Chinese year of completion. Starting in season five, at, just before the Christmas break every year, the four of us would get together in and, and, and a discussion led by Jerry and go, what do you think? We got more? And the consensus was always unanimous. Yeah, we got more. We got to that point in the last year, and he said, what do you think? And really, the consensus was, I think we're done. I was, frankly, kind of hoping that season nine would be it. Because at the time, you know, with two little kids, I really had my hands too full at that point. Although, you know, we would have benefited financially to stay another year, but it was too much. It was too much. So December of 98, I met with uh, Bob Wright and Jack Welch in uh, their apartment down on uh, 60th Street, down the end of this avenue here. They did the best presentation I, I, I ever saw. If, if George Shapiro and I were doing the presentation begging for a pickup, which we did in past years, now it was reversed. Gosh, I remember a negotiation where uh, we held up a uh, picture of a jet and we wrote Air Jerry across the side of the jet and that impressed Jerry. He, he liked using the GE jet and um, that was uh, one way to say, you know, life is going to be good, just keep doing the show. He got a tremendous offer which was published all over, $5 million an episode, which was uh, unheard of. And I remember them telling me that they showed me this chart of the ratings of the show and how it had gone up every year from the seventh year to the eighth year to the ninth year that our rating kept going up. And I said, don't you want to see how high it's going to go? And I said, the only way I'll know that is if I go past it. And uh, after the offer was, was made, uh, Jerry and Howard and I went for a walk around Central Park and uh, he, we ended up on the same bench. Uh, that Jerry told his father that he wanted to go into stand-up comedy. When he was 22 years old, he just graduated Queens College, and this was the same bench, so it was very emotional. He sat on this bench, and uh, I thought for a while, and I thought, you know what? I think it's enough. I think, I think it's time to say goodbye. It was in December at some point, Jerry called us into his office and uh, said with a big smile on his face, um, he decided to end the show. It's on the front page of the New York Times. You know, Jerry walked into the room and like, you were on the front page of the New York Times, can you believe this? Like, it's, a, it's just a show ending. It doesn't go on the front page of the New York Times. I had them, Jerry. They loved me. And then? I lost them. <laughs> I can usually come up with one good comment during a meeting, but by the end it's buried under a pile of gaffes and bad puns. Showmanship, George. When you hit that high note, you say goodnight and walk off. Jerry, he's a comic and he wants to leave with a bang. You don't want to leave, you, you don't want to overstay your welcome on stage, and so I think you don't want to overstay your welcome on television either. We would have conversations about it, and he always said that the show treated him so well that he wanted to treat the show well. I think the fact that we ended it when we did was, was, was really smart, was classy. I really thought that we would go for another year. I re and I was hoping that we would too, because I think everybody, I really felt the show was just hitting a different stride. As, I, it, as I've said before, I think the last two seasons of Seinfeld were getting very physical, physical comedy. I thought some of the writing was getting a little more outrageous, and I thought it really had a great stride to it. But, you know, obviously uh, from from inside out, it was just uh, you know a lot of work for Jerry and the, and the rest of the gang, and they were exhausted. We all were ready to be finished with 18-hour days, and ready to move on to something else. On the same token, it 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 had become a real family, and uh, you just know you're never going to duplicate a show like that and work on anything quite like that again. It always seemed to me that this was going to be one of the hardest shows to end because it's it's not. A sentimental show. I wanted to invite Larry back to do the last episode so we could do it together so that we can end it the way we started it. When we heard that Larry was going to come back and write the finale, we were ecstatic. To have him back in, uh, in a creative mode uh, was both exciting and, and a little, um, we were wondering, you know, the, the old teacher is going to be back and what's, what's it going to be like. I remember hearing about this Good Samaritan law in France, I think it was. Um, and being very intrigued by it because of, of who I am 
and knowing that uh, I could have probably gotten into some kind of trouble in France by, by not pitching in or something like that. So they were just standing there? Yes. Did one of them have a video camera? Yes. Your Honor, with the court's permission, we would like to play back that video and enter it into evidence as Exhibit A. Proceed. Come on! Well, there goes the money for the lipo. <laughs> See, the great thing about robbing a fat guy is it's an easy getaway. They can't really chase you. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually doing them a favor. It's less money for them to buy food. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm starting to think this is a great way to get everybody in the history of the series to come back and testify. And we could show clips at the same time. So now, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm very excited about this idea. The final episode was probably the toughest because of the secrecy element to it. I thought to myself, there is no way with the intense media interest not to mention viewer interest in what this episode was. I thought there was no way that we could possibly film this show in, I think, March, and that it could go on the air in May, and that the, the story of it wouldn't get out. We had to go into extreme measures to think of everything to keep it a secret. Each of us was asked to sign an affidavit swearing that we would not reveal the contents of the episode. Larry was almost... I thought maybe a little paranoid. We looked into ink that couldn't be copied, and then we decided that wasn't the way. And Jerry was actually really interested in all that because he loves all the spy um, elements to everything. No one had the script uh, for the final episode. Um, I was given two pages. I had to sign for them, and I had to give them back right away. I think it was probably hardest on the production people. Certainly, you know, I wasn't the one Xeroxing the script, destroying the script, re-Xeroxing it, destroying it, and re-Xeroxing it. I actually kept, I went into the shredder and grabbed just a handful of the shredded script from the, uh, the table read and stuck it in like a glass box just as a memento of the, the insanity of that final episode. Everybody, every magazine, every radio, so everybody was talking about what that final episode was going to be. I think that was also um, a result of the fact that we went out early. Welcome back, everyone. Jerry Seinfeld and the gang this week taped the grand finale of one of the most memorable TV shows in history. As George Tokamatsu from station KNBC in Los Angeles tells us, almost no one knows what to expect. There they go, slipping past our cameras. There's Wayne Knight, the man who portrays Newman. Someone saw Kramer's Michael Richards in a dark sedan, and yes, even the king of secrets himself, Jerry Seinfeld, in his silver porch. But here on the fringes, the secret remains elusive. Was Elaine and Jerry getting together? Uh, no. Was Jerry and George going to move out to California to do a TV show or something? I don't know what they had in their head. I remember listening to the radio, and they had call-ins on the radio stations where, you know, everybody knew the the real story and they were paying money it was, I, it was an it was crazy it was wild andy greg and i had a little fun with that we went on a uh, some sort of fox news channel interview i think the tease was that we were going to reveal some details about the uh the finale to seinfeld and i think at that point we may not even have known what the finale was so we we essentially made up what we thought a finale could be and threw that out there. The table reading uh, for the finale episode was a, obviously a huge event. It was the return of Larry David. We had a lot of the tremendous character actors over the years were there. It was like a reunion. Some of these characters we hadn't seen for eight or nine years. I remember when I opened up the script too, I was like, I've got one word. Well, it's a good word. I originally didn't even think I was going to be in the final episode. But I actually, I had an agent that was in the, the Castle Rock building at the time. He's my commercial agent. And I came and I went to the commissary and I got something to eat after I had my meeting. And uh, Larry came down and he saw me there. And I'm convinced to this day that had I not gone to lunch and got something to eat that day and Larry came down, I probably wouldn't have been in the finale. They brought Babu back as a broken man <laughs> for the final episode, which was, again, wonderful. Just the one-liners that were going on in the, in the courtroom for the people that were sitting there watching it that never made it to air were just hysterical. Hail fellow well met, Jay Peterman. David Putty. I your boss. And you must be the boyfriend, the man behind the Emerald Curtain. Yeah, that's right. 
Rabbi, help us. Help us to cope with this. Your son's travails should not be a time for sorrow and despair, but should be viewed instead as a wonderful opportunity for growth and enlightenment. I told you! <laughs> I never was nervous doing Jackie, ever. I immediately got scared because I realized this is the final episode of one of the most popular shows in television history. Jackie Childs has an enormous amount to do. I am shocked and chagrined. <laughs> Mortified and stupefied. This trial is outrageous. It is a waste of the taxpayer's time and money. It is a travesty of justice that these four people have been incarcerated while the real perpetrator is walking around laughing. Lying and laughing. Laughing and lying. Because we were so short on time, I mean, shooting became a little bit of an assembly line. Because I would have the cameras set up at a certain angle for the witness stand. As each witness would appear, bring in the next one. Next, next, next. So we would get all those angles. You didn't want anybody to be left out because of such an amazing lineup. It was also fun to sort of sit there at the, uh, def behind the defendant desk and watch everybody perform. It was like we were in the audience watching them. I mean, Jerry and I were howling, laughing, sitting there next to each other and making doodles and just making funny notes to each other. Jerry passed me by at one point on the set and he goes, you're the man. I, I had no idea what he meant, but of course what he meant was I'm the one who puts the nail in the coffin with that speech in the courtroom. All they do is mock me, just like they did the fat fellow. All the time, mocking, 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 <laughs> all the time. Now, it is Babu's turn to mock. Finally, I will have some justice. Send them away. Send them all away. Lock them up forever. They are not human. They are very bad. <laughs> very, very, very bad. <laughs> yeah, our episode was unbelievable. The script was 152 pages long, 42 sets and locations, and approximately 55 minutes of airtime. We worked uh, pretty much all around town. We, uh, we were gonna work out at Van Nuys Airport, a couple different sound stages. The gun, they were so busy picking people up and, and security. You know, we were shooting a piece on New York Street and we had to worry about cameramen who had jumped over the backside of New York Street, which is an alley out in Studio City, and were trying to take photos. So we had to have sec extra security for that. Towards the end of the show, things started disappearing from the set. You know, like it was the Berlin Wall coming down and people were hacking off chunks. So yeah, there was a buzzer that disappeared. There was, a, I think, a toaster that disappeared. And then I believe there was a security guard 24 hours on the set, ultimately, because people kept stealing things. And there were cameras everywhere. It pointed right at the set. Something was missing. People went back, looked at the tape. Oh, and it's some, some, I think somebody recognized him. Like, oh, wait, that guy writes on Sybil. So yeah, there was apparently a very, uh, a very um, tense conversation in which I'm not sure who called, might've been Jerry, called up and said, hey, uh, I think you have something of ours. And they said, uh, really? I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, well, I, I'm looking at a photo of you sort of using a chisel to pry a piece of my set off. Can I have it back, please? The whole week shooting the last episode was, was a highly charged week, and I think it, it certainly caught me by surprise. It was one of those experiences where you know, as a human being, you're not really built to uh, absorb this kind of moment. And you're gonna go through it, but you can't really handle it. And that last circle of power was surprising because we all got around and all of a sudden Jerry started speaking. He said, I want to say something. And I went, oh boy, this is going to be different and it's a big night. What's he going to say? And he said, for the rest of our lives, no one will think of one of us without thinking of the rest of us. And he said, I can't think of three people I'd rather have that be true of. Then we all started crying. Except Michael. <laughs> I don't think Michael cried. <laughs> but that's fine. He was, he, I don't mean to say he wasn't involved in the moment, but it was really emotional. And uh, it was incredible to have to come out and perform after it too, by the way. Poor camera, Mark. Okay, so let it settle. And background cross. Yeah, back. When it came time to have the studio audience come in, each of the studio audience members signed an affidavit swearing they would not reveal the contents of the final episode. 
I found out about a year ago that uh, Jimmy Fallon, one of the uh, regulars on Saturday Night Live, he and a friend, he was not on Saturday Night Live at that time, but he and a friend somehow snuck in to that soundstage for the final episode, and he and his friend attended that final taping of Seinfeld because he was such a fan of the show. And he signed the affidavit too and obviously didn't let the secret out either. All rise. Forest District County Court, Latham, Massachusetts is now in session. The Honorable Judge Arthur Vandalay presiding. Vandalay? The judge's name is Vandalay? Vanda who? Jerry Janet? Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good sign. In the last scene in the uh, jail cell, with the form in the jail cell, the dialogue is um, an exact uh, replica of the very first show. See, now to me, that button's in the worst possible spot. The second button literally makes or breaks the shirt. Look at it. It literally makes or breaks the shirt. Look at it. It's too high. It's in no man's land. Haven't we had this conversation before? You think? I think we have. Yeah, maybe we have. It was kind of a slightly sentimental moment with the camera pulling back and looking at it, we we didn't want to end the series that way. I got a call and say, well, we're coming back to do one more uh, shot. The very last thing that we shot was me doing stand-up in the prison, which is how the whole series really started, which was, it was supposed to be about stand-up. And what's with the lockdown? Why do we have to be locked in our cells? Are we that bad that we have to be sent to prison, in prison? You would think the weightlifting and the sodomy is enough. <laughs> it didn't seem so depressing then that we were still having fun in prison. <laughs> I thought the mall winding up in jail seemed very appropriate yeah. and, and, you know, right on target as, it's almost like, you know, the public forgot. These are selfish, greedy people, you know, that we've, that have been doing all these things for years. And, you know, I thought, it, I thought it, it, it tied everything up nicely. If anyone deserved to go down into the slam, it was George, but uh, <laughs> we all went together. <laughs> Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life we started a tradition that now seems um, to be the norm of doing a clip show and a blooper show that is quite emotional. I remember watching the clip show and just utterly adoring it and feeling incredibly nostalgic and sentimental and sad actually about the ending of our show. For a show whose motto is no hugging, no learning, to play that Green Day song at the end, it's kind of like the circle of power when Jerry started weeping. It was sort of so caught everybody by surprise and it was completely appropriate but it was not <clears throat> typical behavior from him. You know, again, we're an unsentimental group. That is a very sentimental hour of film. To me, they go hand in hand. And when people say the finale, I think of both of those hours. And uh, so to me, they're, they're very satisfying. After nine seasons on the air, it was so long to Seinfeld last night. NBC estimates that as many as 90 million people tuned in. Everything was great until the next day when I began to hear very mixed reaction to the show, and I was, I was a little, you know, certainly disappointed by it. Larry had some concern about too much uh, highlights because the finale had a lot of highlights in it, and I think he was probably correct in that concern. Because how can this final episode live up to what this compilation of great moments right before. It's almost like your opening act is going to be much better than what you're showing after, which is just a single episode. The finale, uh, you know, I figured it was going to be the greatest night of comedy of my life. And uh, I mean, when it, when it didn't turn out to be that way, I was doubly pissed off. It's like, not only are you taking my show away, you're taking it away with a, at the end. You know, the reaction was fierce. I, I was shocked. There was virtually no way to make anybody happy. Um, the expectations, because of how high the bar had been set, because the unexpected was what was expected, 
where could you possibly go? I guess as the years have gone by since then, I, I understand that he didn't want, he certainly didn't want to end on a sweetness and white note. And it was the ultimate non-sweetness and white note. And in, when I wrote my review, what, in that sense, I, I appreciated the fact that it, he gave me something I didn't expect. The first two minutes of that clip show where we compiled every outlandish physical stunt with the Superman theme running through it is one of my favorite things we ever produced on the show. That two minutes really shows you what we did to the sitcom over the course of the nine years. If you watch that and then you think of what the sitcom was before we came along, that, that to me is one of my favorite things that really shows the uh, kind of outlandish excitement that we, that we brought to it and originality. Seinfeld was different from almost every other sitcom in TV history just because it had the same rhythms that you would have in a comedy. It did have the setup, the setup, and the joke. And yet it didn't feel that way. It felt like it was completely different from any comedy that had come before it. I think it's quite clear already that Seinfeld's legacy will be similar to the legacy of The Honeymooners, to The Dick Van Dyke Show, or to The Mary Tyler Moore Show. I think they're just classically well-written, well-developed and poignant characters, and that's what'll let it go on forever. It's like a great oldie but a goodie, a song that you can hear on the radio over and over again. You can see these episodes over and over again. TV Guy just voted it the best show of all time. The Reader's Best Guy voted it the best situation comedy of all time, and Jerry the best comedian of all time. So I think the legacy is gonna stay forever. The fact that the show landed at this point after it's long gone means that there was an essence of something there that endures. And that's the, the greatest compliment and the thing that I'm most proud of is that people look back on it and think it was funny.